an RPG would feel incomplete without role-playing and be just a game. So this week guided a leveling system where the player gains experience, levels up, and then chooses what ability they want their characters to become better at. This will be what defines their character and makes their playstyle more enjoyable for them. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor, where I post weekly devlogs for my game Zoe and a Cursed Dreamer. Character progression is an important part of an RPG game because it helps the player feel invested in their character. Throughout the game, their character will improve in skill and ability, and it's because the player is investing their time and effort into building this character up. So I wanted to create a leveling system for my game and create the interface where the player will be able to select the traits about the character that they want to improve. This one was actually pretty tough for me because I don't have much practical experience when designing UI for games. I've dabbled in the various control nodes that Godot offers for building a UI system, but this is the first time building a user face that will actually be interfaced by users. I needed to get this system in place though, otherwise I wouldn't have much of an understanding about how to design the character progression in my game or what direction I should take when designing abilities for the various classes in the game. Creating this system would help me better visualize what character progression would look like. Knowing what I needed to do, I set out by making the leveling system that's going to be the driving force for character progression. I needed to grant the player experience points whenever they complete a task, like slaying a monster or completing a quest, and then use those experience points to increase their level as needed. To get my feet wet without overwhelming myself, I started with the process of the character collecting their experience points first. But even this proved to be a little trickier than I expected. Personally, I like the idea of experience points being physically created in the world and the player collecting them. So I created an experienced orb that gets dropped by an enemy upon death. These will immediately seek out the character that destroyed the enemy and once collected add their experience to the collector. This is similar to the collectibles I use for items, coins, and hearts, except the logic is a little bit different. The main difference being how movement is handled. For my collectibles, the speed of the item varies based on how far away it is from the target. This gives it a satisfying snap the closer it gets to the player. Before the experience collection, I wanted something a little more loose and free-flowing. I made it so that movement speed isn't what's directly limited, but the weight of the linear interpolation varies based on the distance. What this does is cause the experience to gradually change velocity towards their target the further away from it they are, but as it gets closer it tightens up and moves directly at it. Mainly this was to prevent the orbs from overshooting their target and getting stuck in orbit around the player. I'm not too thrilled about how this looks at the moment though, so I've instead opted to use the collectible system that is currently in place. I'll be trying to tweak this occasionally to see if I can find something else that I like, I just didn't want to spend too much time on this one little feature when it's not even really that important right now. What is important though is how I'm going to be handling character data. Up until now I've been keeping variables about the character on the character class, which you might think makes sense, but as I was adding the experience counter onto the player, I realized that this kind of logic was starting to clutter up the character class. Things like health, stamina, now experience, soon levels, and potentially even character stats and status effects. I felt like it was getting out of hand and I needed to clean it up before it got worse. Ideally, I want character class to only manage controlling the character, so I created a resource specifically for handling character data that gets attached to every character. The character controller will use this data but not manipulate it directly, so the logic of the character data has been delegated to the resource for it to handle but everything else still functions the same, it's just a cleaner way to manage the numbers. Which brings me to something else that I've been wanting to do for a while now, that being how to easily balance the numbers whenever I start polishing the gameplay for the upcoming demo. Currently this is a bit of a hassle because I need to go into each individual enemy scene, track down the specific variable that I want to tweak in the inspector, and hope that I pick the right value and I don't have to come back here again later. I only have a few enemies at this point and it'll only get worse in time. The biggest issue is that these numbers aren't easily accessible. For example with my damage areas. Let's say I wanted to adjust the damage value for my little sprout enemy. I wouldn't actually do this inside of the sprout like you might think. I would instead need to go into the projectile class, find its damage area node, and change the damage amount there. Ideally I want to be able to make all of these changes in one easily accessible location, so I created a system that manages this kind of information. In my previous devlog I mentioned how I was using JSON files to manage my dialog system. JSON files are very useful for easily storing and reading information like this. So I'm also doing the same for this data by reading it and storing it into a singleton when the game is loaded. Then each entity applies the data to itself when it's instance. I was going to store this information in the character data resource mentioned before because I can create a resource for each enemy type and adjust the values there, however it's a little too rigid and tedious for what I need. For example, say the sprout has its primary attack that does a set amount of damage, but it might also have a secondary attack that has different stats. 
I would either need to store multiple damage values that would go unused by most characters, or extend the data script specifically for this sprout. Instead, if I create the JSON file, then I can add this data to the sprout's entry. I have the base enemy class read in the data and apply it as is needed for all enemies, but then I can extend the sprout script, which I'm already doing, and have it apply the data however it needs for that specific class. With all of this foundation laid down, it was finally time to get started on implementing the actual leveling system for our characters. This leveling system is going to be stored inside of the character data mentioned before, but not everything in this game is going to gain experience and level up. This will only apply to characters and their companions, so I extended the character data class to create the party member class, which will have extra things like their inventory and experience. I am keeping levels in the base class though, in case I want to give enemies levels for variety, or inform the player when they're under leveled for this specific enemy. When the player collects experience, it gets added to their XP variable, and then a basic little formula is checked to see if the player should advance to the next level. I'm keeping this formula very simple for now, because it's just to get the ball rolling on the leveling system. There's no need to polish something now that is going to go through who knows how many iterations in the future. So the formula is just a base value multiplied by an exponential value. The base value is how much I want the experience to start at, and influences how much it will increase per level, but the exponential value is what makes this get harder for every level. I'm choosing a somewhat low value here because this is not some massive scale RPG where the player may spend hundreds of hours in. I am but one developer working on this project and can only make so much content, so I want the player to level up fairly quickly. So to help me visualize the amount of carnage, death, and sprout murder that needs to happen, I created a spreadsheet that listed the number of enemy kills you would need to achieve to advance to the next level. Visuals like this are really useful for helping you balance your game, so if you're a developer yourself, then I highly suggest you try and automate these kind of things. As you can see, I can play around with these values and see what effects they have on the numbers. This will be extremely useful for when I start polishing all these numbers in the game. With the leveling system implemented, it was time to start working on the part that I was dreading the most, the UI system, which allows the player to choose how to enhance their character. The primary way that I want the player to build their character is through abilities and perks. I like this idea of enhancing certain abilities of your character that you enjoy using, rather than increasing a set of numbers. I feel like this is a more fun approach to the character progression. In my game, you will pick a certain class to play as, and level your character in that class. For the upcoming demo, this will include three base classes, the Warrior, the Rogue, and the Mage. In the final game, there will be specializations such as Paladin, Necromancer, and Assassin that you can also progress through. Each of these classes will have their own perks such as a Mage's Fireball, or a Warrior's Slam Attack. So I created a basic UI that will allow you to select these perks based on your class. This is just a prototype and does not reflect how it will look in the final product, so it's not impressive right now. I like the idea of using a book for the UI and tried to draw this at first, but it wasn't working out. Large scale pixel art is very tedious and time consuming and I simply didn't have the patience for it. Especially since I just need a concept down and will be changing it later. It was taking too much time to do, so instead I opted to just overlap various 9 patch wrecks and cobble them together into something that worked well enough in the end and was quick to implement. The point of creating this UI was to give me a general idea about what the layout might look like for the players selecting their abilities, to ensure that I don't add too many abilities that would clutter up the UI and make it difficult for the player to decide on what they want to improve. What I learned from this is that I might need to create some subcategories for the different types of abilities. For example, I want to create spells for the different elements like fire, lightning, and ice. But if I want to expand on these and have more powerful versions of these elemental abilities, then I'm gonna quickly run out of space for other abilities. I don't want mages to only use elemental spells, I also want them to have other abilities like mage armor or teleportation. So I will need to categorize the different types of magics into groups and make it easier for the player to decide what abilities they want to obtain or improve. I also want to have some universal abilities that the player in any class can choose. These abilities will have some utility purposes, but what I'm mainly interested in is using these abilities to modify the story that you experience. For example, you can upgrade your persuasion skill which will make you better at talking to others, opening up different dialogue options. Or you can improve your luck ability, which would cause miscellaneous fun events to happen that someone without the luck ability wouldn't even know that they're missing out on. But that's another story for another time. In the description there's a link to a free post everyone can read about how I was able to draw cliffs and walls in Godot with the single click of a button, which was such a mind blowing revelation to me. I regularly post updates like this for my patrons. So if you want to see more about what I'm doing behind the scenes, then consider becoming a patron to support the development of this game. Thank you Uncle Khan for having supported me the most, I am truly grateful. I will see y'all in the next video.